Greetings YouTubers. The video today is going to be twofold. It's going to have two purposes. One is going to be how to use a Baird meter properly. I see many people posting videos using the Baird meter and they're not really using it very effectively. So I want to go over that. And the other thing I want to go over is Miko's airflow problem with his DC-40 when he's using the hose, just the hose. So, Miko, I've seen your videos and everything, and I wonder if we've really addressed the problem with airflow from the hose. From the power nozzle, it looks fine as far as I can tell. So I've got a DC-65 here, DC-25 over here. Uh, I'm not sure um, what your, your changeover valve looks like on a DC-40. I'm guessing it's closer to this one, the 65, but uh, I'm not sure. So let me start out with going over this Baird meter. So you've got a little reducer here that comes with it. So this right here is a much larger opening, and that is primarily used for, if you can see it from this angle, this is a, a, a Kirby actuator. So when you put it on a Kirby, it can literally get the airflow from the base plate right here. And if you are not using the Kirby, you can go put this hose adapter in, and you can fit a standard hose fitting in there. In addition to that, it came with a little Hoover adapter. So you've got a little, got a little notch right there. And you put that dude in there like that, then you can put a Hoover hose on this end and get a fairly tight fit, more or less. So the big thing that has been somewhat aggravating me, <laughs> trying to contain myself here, is that I see people use it in a position other than horizontal. This right here, horizontal, not like this, not like that, not like this. If you want accurate results, consistent results, it needs to be horizontal only. If you go and use it like this, you will go and see, I can even make the little yellow disc bounce a little bit. You'll get a reading that's too high. If you use it like this, you'll get a reading that's too low. So let's actually see that. So I got a DC-65 hose here. Go ahead and put that on. So about a three, pretty much. But watch this. Now it's a one. Now it's a five. So that's not good. It would be really a three. So the top of the disc hits the three line. Well, there you go, close enough. Also, when you're measuring stuff with a hose, you don't want to have a bend in it. Last thing you want to do is, I'm exaggerating here to prove a point, you don't want to go and have something all knotted up with all kinds of weird bends, 90 degree angles because the amount of airflow will be reduced. And when I do my tests, I don't measure, especially with my anemometer, I don't measure vacuums with this bend in it right here. I'll go and I'll simply lay the vacuum down. That keeps the hose pretty straight. I'll go ahead and put the Baird meter on and measure it there. Now only having one bend in it won't make that much difference, but let's see what happens. And we're at a we're at a three, so it's not that bad. So that's how you're going to get good, consistent results. Now let's take a look at some spots that I don't know, Mike, if you've actually taken a look at them closely bring the camera closer. So you have, this isn't the changeover valve, but you do have this, uh, I suppose, clean out location right here. 
kind of neat if you happen to get a clog in there. That's not the changeover valve, but you have a seal that's right here, and that can affect airflow a little bit uh, going to the ball in the head. That's not the changeover valve, though. So right in here, it's going to be a little hard to see. Right there, you got a changeover valve. Now, let me see if I can do this. There. So now, unfortunately, the changeover valve is closed, but it's also difficult to see. Let me see if I can do this slowly to see it open back up again. There you go. So I'll see, I'll do that again. Closes, right? And then opens again. So obviously, when you see this valve, when you see this valve open right here, nothing's going um, through. There's a hose that goes through the ball uh, to, the, to the head. So now it's in hose mode. And the fact that you're getting like a, a, a one instead of, say, a three or so, uh, there's some funny business probably going on with this. So that's a DC-65. I'm guessing that's probably what you're looking at here. But I've also got a DC-25. Take the bin off here. Here's a changeover valve. This is obviously a much older changeover valve. So I see that go back and forth. See that in there? Get a better view. So there's a changeover valve there. And you've got, I'll, see, I'll show you what it does from the other side. This is part two of it. I don't think you have this kind of valve. But see, that's got a seal right here as well. So that opens up, hose moves over, hose moves over the other way, and then this is closed. So I don't know if you have a chance to take a look at that, but I really would like you to be able to get at least a full three on the Baird meter rather than a one, because if you're really down to around a one, uh, that's, that's far too low. Um, also, there's been some people I know that have uh, said, well, this thing isn't very scientific because you can't calibrate it. Well, guess what? At the factory, when they built these things, let's see if I can get a good view. See that little white threaded, we'll call it a white plastic uh, bolt in there. That's your calibration. How do you know? Well, the spring is attached to it on one end. It's threaded, and guess what? See this end right here on the top? If the camera will focus, let's see if I can get in there. Guess what? They twist it in. They go and get a good airflow source that gives them a decent calibration. Whether, say, they're calibrating it to a 5 or maybe full scale to a 10, whatever it happens to be. And then they twist this until it matches to what they need at the factory. And then they go and they cut it off and they put some glue right there to glue that in. So these were calibrated at the factory, provided that this isn't abused, dropped, thrown around, or guess what? This passes a lot of airflow through it, right? Guess what happens? The inside of this tube will get dirty in it, especially if you're in a dirty environment. So what do you do? You can go take a paper towel or a rag or something like that. I go and get a paper towel, and then I put... Um, I put armor all on it, and I wrap it around in here, you know, push it through, twist it around a bunch, and I find I have to do that about once a year or so to keep the inside right in here, which will correspond to, you know, the inside of this, to keep it slippery, right? Because as Miko um, found out, uh, I think a couple of months ago, that his disc was getting stuck. It would go along, go along, and then it would kind of get stuck somewhere in here. You have to wiggle it around a little bit. I mean, this is somewhat of a sensitive device, and it does need to be maintained and kept clean. So I hope this helps, and have fun measuring. But when you measure, try to make sure everybody who uses a Baird meter, if you care about getting maximum measurements, keep your hoses straight, and keep your bared meter level. Don't do that and don't do that. Literally move your vacuum so it's horizontal. Well, let's see. I've got a the DC40 similar to um, the DC65. So I would have to tilt this over before I hook this up. I would want to go and have this horizontal. 
I wouldn't want to go and have it vertical. So until next time, which I think the next video should be, here let me go over, show you. The next video coming up for a whole house cleaning by request is a Hoover, a Hoover Turbo Power 5000. There's the power nozzle. And that's what we're going to use next time. And this one has the HEPA bag upgrade in it. So until next time, VAC fans, happy vacuuming.